Greetings friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel. People have different opinions about birth control. Uh, some have wondered if it's proper or not for uh, married Christian couples in order to practice it. And if so, what might be the options that could be biblically acceptable or not? Now let's start off by saying that Bible does not have any particular admonition against birth control methods that don't involve killing infants or preventing inheritance. But before I go further, I'd like to go a little bit into the history. Some of this is a little bit humorous from uh, Time Magazine. They had an article about birth control. 1550 BC, an Egyptian manuscript called the Eribur's Papyrus directs women on how to mix dates, acacia, and honey into a paste, smear it over wool, and use it as a pessary to prevent conception. So that's basically a, a type of barrier, if you will, uh, for uh, uh, as a contraceptive. Now, in the 1700s, Casanova's memoirs detail his experiments in birth control from sheep bladder condoms to the use of a half a lemon as a makeshift cervical cap. Again, that's also a couple different barrier methods, if you will. And in 1839, uh, Charles Goodyear uh, invents technology to vulcanize rubber and puts it to use to manufacture uh, rubber condoms, uh, interuterine devices, douching syringes, and womb veils. So some various things were invented and have been used, uh, not all of which are appropriate. But I'd like to read some comments that Time had about all these kind of things. Not that every historical effort was all that effective. Some methods are still used today, such as coitus interruptus, or pulling out, which is referenced in the Old Testament, but it's never been a reliable form of pregnancy prevention. And other methods seem, by today's standards, straight up bizarre. In the 10th century, Persia, women were told to jump backwards seven or nine times after intercourse, dislodge any sperm, as those were believed to be magical numbers. Well, uh, this something I would not recommend. don't see how that uh, would work, but this is again something that some people believed. Now going further into the Time article, yet it wasn't all a shot in the dark. Many researchers today believe that several archaic methods of birth control actually had the dual perks of being somewhat effective and not lethal. This is perhaps not so surprising considering that certain methods were passed along from one woman to another. For instance, the ancient Egyptians weren't completely off the mark with their pessaries. Some documents reveal that women would also use pessaries made of acacia gum, which was later found in 20th century studies to have spermicidal effects. Several other plants used in the ancient world were later found to have contraceptive qualities as well. So that's a little bit on the history from a secular perspective. Now, I'm going to quote something from the late Pastor General of the Old Worldwide Church of God uh, regarding basically kind of uh, his take on certain science at the time. Some experimenters insist spermatozoa retain power for fertilization only 48 hours and that ova must be fertilized within 24 hours in a fallopian tube. Thus, if this were true, there's only a period of a few hours in any month when human conception is possible. This discovery led to the rhythm cycle theory. But this so-called method has, in fact, produced quite a bumper crop of babies. There's actually a joke about this, and it goes like this for using that type of birth control. What do you call people who use the rhythm method? Answer, parents. Anyway, as far as contraceptions go, uh, Herbert Armstrong uh, gave some of his opinions in a book he wrote called The Missing Dimension in Sex. Contraception and Sexual Dysfunction is the use of contraceptives contrary to God's biblical teachings. The Roman Catholic Church has always responded, yes, to what allows the rhythm method. But if the Bible, the Holy Word of God, the Maker's Instruction book to mankind, be your authority, it says no such thing. Sometimes the case of Onan is cited. But that incident upholds no such teaching in Genesis 38. God destroyed Onan. Why? Not for intelligently spacing the arrival of children in a happy family. Onan's purpose 
in pretending conception was because he knew that the son born would not belong to him. And he did it, quote, lest he should give offspring to his brother. Onan's sin was his refusal to obey the law which required him to beget a son and bear his brother's name. His disobedience of that law was sin. No such law pertains to New Testament Christians. With animals, conception takes place as a result of instinct. It's automatic. Reproduction is the sole purpose of sex in animals. Not so with humans. Sex serves the wonderful purpose of love giving in marriage. Humans are endowed with minds. Humans were placed on earth for the express purpose of developing God-like character, learning to make right decisions with prayerful guidance from God and His Word, and to exercise self-direction to rightly act in those decisions. Any teaching which instills in wives the dread and fear of pregnancy is a religious heresy and or a violation of the higher laws of Almighty God. No wife should ever need to suffer the fear of pregnancy. It's natural for every wife to want to become a mother. To prevent having children and producing a family would be a direct violation of God's command. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. From Genesis. But to plan a family in an intelligent manner as to the time of the first arrival and the spacing of other children, that's a different manner. Nothing in the Bible forbids this. Much in the Bible, in principle, supports it. And we in the continuing Church of God do believe that the Bible does allow for birth control. Now I'd like you to consider something that the Apostle Paul wrote. I'll be reading this uh, from the New King James. This is 1 Timothy uh, chapter 5, verse 8. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Now the principle for providing for one's family implies that one's not going to have more children that, uh, than you could handle. Now that does not allow abortion, by the way, which is a type of murder, but it does allow for the principle of spacing children. Now it's even possible that in the last days Jesus made a statement that is supportive of some type of family planning or birth control. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 24. Start reading in verse 19, and these are the words of Jesus. But woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation. Now, I'm not going to go there, but places such as 1 Corinthians 7 verses 3 through 5 say that married couples are to have sex. And it seems like Jesus is telling his followers they may not wish to become pregnant right before the Great Tribulation. And if so, it can be implied that some type of uh, birth control was advisable as we get closer to the time to flee. And it also reminds me of some comments that Paul made also in 1 Corinthians 7, uh, this is verse 26 and 27, about for this present distress. Now, even if wise birth control wasn't something Jesus was implying, although I think it also was, one difference between proper birth control and other non-proper forms is that proper forms of birth control do not kill a life. Now, while there are many doctrinal differences between, let's say, the continuing church God and the Eastern Orthodox Church, I would like to read something from the Orthodox regarding uh, birth control. A view has taken hold among Orthodox writers and thinkers on this topic, which permits the use of certain contraceptive practices within marriage for the purpose of spacing children, enhancing the expression of marital love and protecting health. Now the biological reality is that most ovum that a woman produces and most sperm that a male produces will produce, they will never unite to begin life. It will not happen. So because they would basically die on their own, uh, preventing the two from getting together, uh, we don't see scripturally uh, uh, prohibited. Yet aborting a fertilized egg or ovum is killing a, a life and we're opposed to that. Now because it can remove a fertilized egg, IUDs, intrauterine devices, are considered to be abortion inducing and we do not consider those to be an acceptable form of birth control. 
Uh, speaking of IUDs, I want to read something that ReligiousTolerance.org reported. Women who use an IUD will expel about one fertilized ovum annually, assuming they engage in intercourse once per week. Well, mar younger marital couples are certainly uh, more active than that on average, and so maybe more than one a year. Now, there's another type of birth control. It's kind of similar. It's called Plan B, or also known as the morning after pill. So I'd like to read something about that. The morning after pill designed to induce abortion immediately after sex will now be available without a prescription to any female 15 and over. This, my friends, is bigger than Roe versus Wade. Well, since the morning after pill helps ensure that an ovum fertilizer otherwise uh, won't survive, it should be considered uh, something causes abortion and it's not appropriate for uh, Christian couples. And mainly, I think the pill is directed toward uh, fornicators and adulterers. Anyway, what about regular birth control pills, simply called the pill? I'd like to read something from uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Brian Close, he's a PhD. And this is something at Human Life International. Contraceptive means a method of birth control prevents fertilization of the egg by the sperm by placing a physical barrier between them. However, all birth control pills and other hormone-based methods of birth control on the market today function as abortifacients part of the time. So what he's saying is all the birth control pills he looks at have the potential to uh, kill uh, a fertilized ovum and therefore they're not appropriate. Birth control pills themselves do affect a woman's health. Now it's possible that there might be some type of birth control pill that's not abortive, and you need to research that to find out if it's true. But I also will caution you, because when I've looked into this, the people who tend to believe in abortion, and many of the mainstream sites say, oh, birth control pills don't cause abortion. But they don't consider that once an egg's been fertilized, uh, that if it's killed, then it's an abortion. They say, well, it's got to attach, it's got to do this, or whatever. But those of us from a Christian perspective say, oh no, once an egg has been fertilized, uh, it's a life and you cannot kill it, and you don't take do things that may go intentionally kill it. So because of that, we don't believe that uh, abortive pills and interuterine devices are appropriate for Christians. And another inappropriate form of, you can call it birth control, would be sodomy, which is unhealthy as well as biblically pro prohibited. Basically, barrier methods of birth control are generally acceptable for Christians. This would include things like condoms, diaphragms, cervical caps, uh, birth control sponges, etc. Uh, we're not going to go say every possible thing here. You need to do your own, own research. Now, some have claimed that uh, certain herbs like wild yam root reduce fertility in women. Yet, when I did a Medline search a couple of days ago, for studies online looking for its overall effectiveness, none showed up. There's simply not enough scientific evidence to support that wild yam is an effective contraceptive. Now, a chiropractor once told me that wild yam thickened the uh, outer wall, uh, the, the membrane over the ovum, making it uh, less likely to be fertilized by, by sperm, and therefore reduce the chance of pregnancy. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I've tried to do some research and I couldn't find it. But I will say that throughout history, women have consumed wild yams and women have gotten pregnant. Okay, so they don't seem like they'd be a, wild, a uh, highly reliable form of birth control pills. That being said, uh, there's nothing in the Bible prohibit women from eating wild yams, and if you want to do that, you could do that. I don't think that's abortive from what I've been able to research. And, but again, maybe it might reduce fertility. Um, as far as timing methods like rhythm, uh, as long as they don't violate the scriptural uh, restrictions against intercourse during a menstrual period, that would be acceptable. And by the way, you can read those scriptures about menstrual sex uh, prohibitions in Leviticus 20, verse 18, uh, Ezekiel 22, 10. And, but again, timing methods aren't considered highly reliable. There's other methods that may or may not be appropriate, and you should look into them whether or not uh, they're abortive or if they could cause some type of harm. Abortive 
forms of birth control are not appropriate for Christians, yet appropriate forms, as I say, barrier, uh, timing methods, uh, and maybe even wild yams, because uh, they work, I don't know if they work, uh, uh, would be appropriate. For uh, more on uh, sex and marriage, we have an article at the ccg.org website called Why Sex and Marriage? What are each spouse's responsibilities regarding sex and marriage? What's allowed and not allowed according to God's word? And we thought to uh, go along with that article, having this information about birth control may be helpful because many Christians wonder uh, if, if it's allowed. And we in the Continuing Church of God do believe that uh, timing methods, uh, barrier methods generally are allowed. Abortive methods certainly aren't, and that couples should do their own research. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel.